let's talk UCLA football. Uh, last year, this team went three and nine on the season, but this year they're returning the most starters in the Pac-12, tied with Oregon with 17. Now that stat might mean absolutely nothing at all. It might mean something, but it definitely means that this Bruin team was young last year. Talented, yeah, but young. So of course, as Bruin fans, we're wondering how big of a difference can this one season, this one year make on this program? Oh, and if you're wondering what this is all about, yeah, I was going to set up the office, but I really wanted to be sitting on a couch. Feel free to make yourself comfortable. I know I am. And speaking of comfortable, that is a word we have heard over and over and over and over again at fall practice, because apparently this team is a lot more comfortable than they were last season. More comfortable, you know? We have just a bunch of more returning leaders coming back. Um, you can tell he's getting a lot more comfortable with that too, so. Yeah, I've definitely had to grow in that area, but now it feels a lot more comfortable being out here because I've done it so much. So. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot more comfortable. All right. Well, it's great to see that this team is so comfortable just one week into fall practice. Now let's take a look back at some of the best moments from week one. Now, a little bit of good news, bad news situation for you guys here. Do you want the good news or the bad news first? The good news, obviously. The good news is that grades are up. But our, our kids right now, you know, we have the highest grade point average we've had um, ever here at school in the, in the spring term. So um, I'm real confident with the guys we get now and then the academic system that they have in place here. What was that GPA? I think it was like a 289. Oh. Did he say 2.89? Bruins. Bruins. We, we can do better. We can, we can do better. The bad news is that redshirt senior running back Joshua Kelly is out right now with a day-to-day -day knee injury. Is that one position where you could kind of maybe absorb an injury just because you have a lot of depth and no. versatility there? No. no. Absorb Josh Kelly injury? No. I don't think anybody wants to lose Josh Kelly, so. Uh, no. No, we, I don't. I, uh, we don't, no. I don't like it that way at all. So, and we're not going to lose Josh Collins. So Josh today today should be back in a couple days. So yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Woo. Scared me there for a second, coach. What about the offensive line? How are things looking, boss? Everybody's buying in now. Um, you see a lot of the players. Um, they just make you more, uh, like, paying attention more. You see a lot of the off time. Uh, the spain is out the film room now. Um, but the, the most important thing, like the starting line is doing pretty good, but our backups is, uh, they, they do a lot of stuff behind behind the scenes, uh, like Sam Marazzo, John Gaines. Those guys help, uh, help me out with my calls every day, so. What ways did they help you out? Um, they're just bright guys. Like uh, the whole old line, they're, they're, all, they're all smart guys, so. All right, so, so these are the guys that are bringing up the 2.89 team GPA, clearly. Now we just need to figure out who's bringing down the opposing team's quarterback. Seriously, this team only had 15 sacks last season, which is just not going to cut it. So it's safe to say that the pass rush is an area that needed improvement. How, how do you go about improving the pass rush from last season? Same thing. I think our, old, our, our younger players have gotten a little bit older. You know, they've got a, another a year in the system. You, you got to remember, we played a ton of freshmen on the defensive line last year, so they, they've all improved. They've improved athletically, they've improved their bodies, so they've improved their knowledge of the scheme, they've improved their techniques, so um, it's just a maturation process that'll go on that way. And it looks like DTR completely agrees that a year has made a huge difference. I think I know where to go with the ball a lot more, a lot sooner, a lot quicker, I'm more comfortable in the pocket now and stuff like that. So. And no one does sooner and faster like Darnay Holmes. Yes, he's a lightning fast defensive back, but I'm talking off the field. Holmes has been a regular on the AD's academic honor roll and has graduated with a degree in African American studies in just two years. That's less years than he had interceptions last year. You did graduate. Oh, so how, how, how long? Uh, you graduated in two years? That's what they say. Wow. Did you said like a record? Did anybody say uh, anybody that before? Truthfully, 
I just mapped it out and executed my goal. I'm not keeping track of if it's a record or if it's an accolade. It was just something I set out and I did what I had to do to get that uh, degree. When did you did you walk already? Yeah, I walked in the summer with the boys. Wow, what was that like for you to, to have done that in two years? Oh, just a blessing just to be out there with the boys and just have my family there and friends and just really just to digest that feeling was the ultimate feeling, but now we focus on this thing right here. Honestly, I'm not surprised. Amazed, yeah, I'm amazed, but I'm not surprised. Amazing, not surprising. Especially given the adversity that Holmes had to overcome growing up. Now that guy standing next to Darnay, that's his fellow cornerback, Elijah Gates. They actually played together for the first time when they were six years old, back in their Pop Warner days. Now they're playing alongside each other again and they could not be more grateful. You know, come from the city we come from, we could have went the other route. We could have uh, tapped into a different agenda, but just having a great family, I would say a great upbringing, but just the right demonstrations, you know, we was able to get to this point now and we're not gonna stop. You know, it's a blessing, it's a blessing to be with my God, you know. We've been dreaming about stuff like this, so, you know, just out here and just doing what we love to do is just a blessing. You know? Wow. Just wow, these two guys. Uh, that was heavy. Which reminds me. What was the highest? How much did you weigh the most? Uh, 4'11", when four I first 11. got here last summer. Yeah. Look, I don't, I don't know if this is just because I'm a woman and I was raised in a society that made me think about weight differently than the way that guys think about weight, but I just think it's so funny how often we talk about and like how candidly we talk about Mafi's weight. Like, all the time, we're literal Weight Watchers. Uh, <laughs> but no, honestly, he looks great, and he is looking to lose a little bit more weight. Um, but the important thing is that he would look amazing at any weight. Body positivity. It's a thing. And besides getting their bodies right, these guys have also been getting their minds right. I meditate with my brother, so at 11.30 we we'll get some meditation in. We just try to constantly tap into things so we're actually present and grounded. What? Hmm? I missed it. Can you, can we rewind? I, what was it? Was it good? You know, I'm just the type of person that I have to learn that I gotta actually deal with my problems. You know, being vulnerable is actually a, not a weak thing, it's actually a, a blessing. You know, being vulnerable, actually being interested in your problems, you know, comprehending your problems and understanding your problems allow you to grow. So I just have a strict routine, you know, uh, don't make sure I don't, as a deep group and as a family, as a team, we make sure we don't get swayed into distractions. And we make sure that we uh, keep the standard at high, high level. And I have to say that so far in camp, Darnay has set the standard high for best interview answers. Is this the final number? Yes, it's the final number right here. Darnay, you been keeping track of this? Where are all those numbers? Now, I'm just keeping track that we produce it on the field. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, my favorite. What did you work on in off season? Uh, everything that I need to work on. <laughs> okay, great. You, sh you should be doing exactly that. Look, the guy made a plan to graduate in two years, and he did. So if he tells me that he worked on everything he needed to, I'm inclined to believe him. And you better believe that the first game is just three short weeks away. So thank you so much for watching Four's Update. I'm your host, Danielle Alvari, and I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, Elijah Gates can change his number as much as he wants. But the real numbers that need to change are three and nine.